so let's go through how to install and configure DHCP server. So, right server manager here. Now, before we go into this, there's a couple of things we need to know. This is the first server in my network. I'm going to run DHCP on it, and I'm already running DNS on it. You can see that right here. I'm going to need it to know my IP address, and so that is 172.16.1.10. And that's going to come into play when I configure my DHCP scope. So let's start by installing DHCP server. So I'm going to go to manage, add server, it's the wrong thing. Manage, add roles and features. There we go. And standard role or feature based installation on this server. And I want to install my DHCP server and add features. And next, don't need any features. This device must have an I static IP address in order to run DHCP. Before you install, you should plan your subnet scopes and exclusions. Yeah, that's really going to simplify your life later on. All right, let's go ahead and install it. And I'm going to go ahead and pause the video while this finishes the installation, and then we'll pick it up as soon as the installation has finished. All right, so our installation is finished. I'm going to go ahead and close this. And you see up here we have a little notification. And it says we need to complete our DHCP configuration. Basically, it's post-deployment configuration. All right, so if we install DHCP. It doesn't actually do anything until we configure it. So you can either click this, or you can go to Tools and DHCP, and you can configure it either way. But let's walk through this one first. So we're going to complete our DHCP configuration. And there's a couple of things that it's going to require, and this will automate this process a little bit for you. We'll use the DHCP tool for later configuration, and you can do this outside of this tool, but this just simplifies your life. So this is going to create a couple of uh, new groups, DHCP administrators, DHCP users. Okay, that's fine. It's also going to authorize DHCP server on the target computer if domain joined. Now, what that does is that's a security feature. It's designed to keep somebody from accidentally activating a DHCP server if they're playing around and don't know what they're doing. You have to be a domain administrator to authorize the DHCP server. Now, don't get too excited about this. This doesn't protect you against rogue DHCP attacks. The only thing it stops is somebody on a domain joined computer from using Microsoft DHCP server as a rogue DHCP server in your network. If an attacker is going to do it, they just won't use a domain joined computer or they'll use Linux or something like that. So this doesn't protect you against rogue DHCP servers. It protects you against accidental rogue DHCP servers. How's that for a way to put it? And if you want to protect against an actual attack from a rogue DHCP server, then you're going to need to use switch level DHCP snooping. And that's going to come obviously off of your switches and protect you that way. All right, so let's go ahead and click next. And we're going to use the following user's credentials. So basically that's whoever you are. You need to give it an administrator's permission with the alter or with the authorization. There we go to authorize this server in Active Directory, and a standard domain admin will do that. If you're not logged in as that, you can use alternative credentials here, or you can skip it and come back and do it later on. That's sometimes not a bad thing, because you can set up a DHCP server, get it all configured, you just don't activate it until you're ready for it to go online. But in this case, we're just bringing something up, we're ready to do it, so we click Commit. And creating security groups done, authorizing DHCP server done, and close. All right, so at that point, we're ready to serve DHCP addresses. However, we still haven't configured a DHCP scope. And that's where we're actually going to define the options for DHCP. Now, we're going to do single scope, assuming single site. So small office network running Microsoft DHCP server is what we're getting ready to configure. So I'll go to Tools and DHCP. Let me go ahead and blow this up. All right, so here is our DHCP server, test server one .test group .local. If I expand that, I've got IPv4, IPv6, expand IPv4. Here I have server options, policies, and filters. All right, we're just going to go with a basic DHCP scope configuration. So I'm going to right click on IPv4 and click new scope. And next, right, so I'm going to set my scope name, and I'm going to do local 
network. And then I can skip the description or you can add one if you've got multiple scopes being hosted on this. But that's primarily going to be for a larger network. So we'll click next. Now, starting IP address. Now it's only going to serve IP addresses within this range. So if you remember, my IP address was 172.16.1.10. So I'm going to do 172.16.1.100 and I'm going to have it serve through 172.16.1.199. So that's going to serve two, uh, 100 addresses for me, which means I can configure 100 clients. Obviously, if I create a smaller scope, fewer devices, larger scope, more devices, that's going to depend on that pre-planning you did or you figure out who are going to be your servers, what addresses do you need for which devices, uh, what addresses are going to be DHCP assigned? Which do you need any exclusions? Normally you don't. I'm not a big fan of using exclusions. I think it represents poor planning on your part. If you've planned well, you can um, predefine everything that you need. You don't have to do exclusions. You can just specify which address range you want to actually serve. Subnet, you can either put in the subnet mask here or you can set the subnet length here. Either way works. We're just going to go standard class C address and next. All right, add exclusions. So an exclusion is an address within your range of addresses you're handing out that you actually don't want to hand out after all. And like I said, to me, this is normally a result of poor planning. Um, if you've done your planning well in advance, you don't need to use exclusions. But let's say you had five devices from 150 to 154 that you needed to not have address because they were statically assigned. Well, then you could put in those starting and ending addresses and it wouldn't pass out those addresses. I'm not going to do that. The subnet delay here, this has to do with running multiple DHCP servers and a failover configuration. So that's something we'll look at later when we do some advanced DHCP configurations. But for the moment, because we're doing single site, single server, we're just going to leave that alone and we're going to click next. All right, lease duration. The default is eight days. This is once somebody leases an address, how long is this address good for? Now, the shorter the lease duration, the faster leases fall off and the faster addresses get recycled by DHCP so they can be used again. The longer the lease duration, the less traffic you have to your, towards your DHCP server. Microsoft's default is eight days. Now, halfway through the lease duration, a Windows client will attempt to renew its DHCP lease. So that means every four days on this server, or whenever a client leases an address from the server, every four days it will try to renew that lease. If it can't, then it starts doing it a little more often and it gets a little more paranoid until finally it runs out of that eight days and then it stops functioning. But as long as it can renew, it'll just keep renewing every four days. We're going to go ahead and leave that as default. That normally works, although if you're doing DHCP in an environment where you have people in and out quite a bit, let's say you have a guest network, your business and so people are coming in and out quite a bit you might want to go with a much shorter lease duration just so that when somebody leaves that address doesn't stay locked down by DHCP for the next eight days all right so we're assuming an office network so we're going to be okay with eight days and we're going to click next all right DHCP options now this is going to be things like what's your default gateway your DNS server things like that yeah let's go ahead and configure these options now all right our default gateway We'll do 172.16.1.1, and we'll add that. Normally, that's all you're going to use is just one. It is possible to add more. Creates routing issues, confusions. If you want redundancy uh, for your routes and your internet connectivity, there are better ways to do it. So we'll just leave it at the one and go to next. Now, our parent domain, this is pulled from our um, the domain that we created our Active Directory domain, so we're good with that. And it's automatically defaulted to using itself as a DHC or as a DNS server. So it's going to tell all of the clients who lease an address from this to use itself as a DNS server. Now, that's because this system is set to use itself as a DNS server.
if it was set to use another DNS server, then the DHCP would default to whatever. You can also add alternative DHCP servers here for redundancy. Since we've only got single server in this network, I'm not going to, but we could. Let's go ahead and click Next, and then Win Server. Now, Win Server is maintained for backwards compatibility. You actually don't need it. Um, in fact, it hasn't been used for a long, long time. But Microsoft maintains it because they are fanatic about backwards compatib compatibility. There we go. Got the word out right. Either that or they just, you know, have been too lazy to remove it. We don't need it, so we're going to click Next. Now, last step. Do I want to activate this scope? If I activate this scope now, then it will immediately start serving DHCP addresses. If I don't want it to, then I deactivate this scope and say, no, I will activate it later. And again, we can do that if we want to get everything all configured. We just don't want it to go online yet. Now, I'm ready for it to go online, so I'm going to go ahead and say, yes, activate this scope now, and then finish. And so here's my scope, and it is all configured. So I expand my scope, click on my address pool, and it will show me the addresses that I have available. The address leases will show me all the leases I currently have. The reservations, that's another more advanced DHCP topic that we'll tackle a little bit later. Basically what it does is it guarantees the same IP address to a specific MAC address every time it connects. Scope options, this is where our router, our DNS servers, and our DNS domain name is, and where our wins would be if we were gonna add more to that or if we added that. If we want additional options, we can right click on scope options and click configure options. And here you'll see all of the different DHCP options that we can use. In a small office network, these are the ones that are gonna be used most often. So, and since we're focusing here on a small office network, single server, it makes sense to go ahead and leave it at this point rather than diving into all of the others. Policies, server options, are things that we'll deal with in a more advanced DHCP configuration. So, at the moment, for a small office network, this is what we need. We need to define a scope, start and ending address, a subnet mask, a router, a DNS server, a domain name, and activate the scope. And that's what we've done. So at this point, we can start seeing address leases pop up here when clients come online and they're configured to obtain an IP address automatically. So. That is a basic DHCP configuration.